Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to specify a seasonal mailing address for customers in a Microsoft Access database. Today's question comes from John in Hancock, New Hampshire, one of my gold members. John says, I have a customer who mails a monthly newsletter. Many people go south in the winter, so they want their newsletter mailed to another address at a specific date. I'm looking for an elegant way to have access switch the address at the appropriate time. Elegant is the goal, for I know that is what you do. Well, thank you very much, John. I appreciate the compliment. And yes, let me show you a good way to specify that seasonal address. Before we get started, you should know how to use the date serial function. That's how you can take the components of a date, like the month, day, and year, and put them together into a valid access date value. That's important. You should know how to use the immediate if function, the if function, I call it. That's how you can basically do an if then statement in a function in a query or in a form. And of course, you should know calculated query fields. There are three videos I want you to make sure you watch before continuing with this one. If you haven't watched these yet, go watch them. They're free. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. I'll put links that you can click on down below in the description field below. So go click on them. Go on. Go. Go watch them. And then come back. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can grab off my website if you want to. Again, there's a link down below. And in my database, I've got a customer table. And in my customer table, I've got some address fields right there. Address, city, state, zip, and country. So what we're going to do is copy those. Control C, come down to the bottom here and paste them in down here. And we're going to change these to address 2, city 2, state 2, zip 2, country 2. Now... A lot of you who've watched my other videos are going to say, but Rick, don't you tell us not to put duplicate things of any type in a table, right? You don't want address one, two, three, four, five. You don't want on an order, you know, product one, product two, product three, product four. You want to use a separate related table. Yeah, that's the general rule. And if you're ever going to do more than I say three of something, you definitely want to put that in a separate related table. However, if it's just one or two things, I'm okay with that. Okay, if it's just address one, address two for their seasonal address, okay. Something like phone numbers, right? Home phone, work phone, cell phone, three max. Okay, if you're ever going to want more than that, then yes, that should be in a separate related table. But for this instance, I'll allow address and address two. That's okay. In the extended cut for the members, I am going to show you how to do multiple addresses. So we are going to peel the addresses out, the seasonal addresses, and put them in a separate table as it should be done, but this is fine if all you're ever gonna want is two addresses. Again, I'll allow it. Now we also need to specify the dates that we want to use the primary address versus the secondary address. And so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna add some date fields down here, address, month, begin, and that's gonna be a number. We can't use actual date fields because it's gonna change from year to year. Right. If I put in a date that's like this year, like let's say I want October 1st to December 1st, I got to specify a year. So I'm going to specify a month and day value separately. OK, we're going to do address day begin. So for January 1st, for example, that'll be 1-1. One, one. OK, then we'll have address month end and address day end. And then what we'll do in the query is we'll put that together using date serial to make an actual date for this year. We'll see that in a few minutes. Now, since most of our customers have address one and address one is what most people are just going to have one address, we're going to make these be the dates that you use the primary address. And if not, if the current day falls outside of these dates, switch over to address two. Okay. So I'm going to set the default value for this to be January 1st to December 31st, okay? So if, if the current date falls between these dates here, use the first address. If not, look for a second address. Because we'll assume, if these are the default values, they're not gonna change it unless they're adding a second address. See where I'm going with this? And now one thing to also take into consideration, let's save this and let's go to, um, let's go to data sheet view and let's make sure all the existing records have these values in there. Okay, so let's just copy and paste this stuff. So one, right? We gotta always take into consideration existing records when we add fields, all right? And if you've got a lot of them, 
you can use an update query. And if you don't know how to use an update query, I got videos on my website and on my YouTube channel. Look for update query. It'll up. You can use that and you can just run it once and it'll update everybody in the table. Okay, so by default, right now, everybody in the database has one address from this date to this date. And it should all be an address one, if you got one. Some people don't have an address, that's okay. Okay, but now we can go ahead and put in address twos and set these dates. Let's set this up in a form. It makes it a little easier to work with and see than using the table. I generally say try not to do as much work as you can in your tables and queries and work with forms, especially for your end users. Your end users should all be working with forms, forms and reports. Okay, so let's come into my customer form here, design view. Let's move things around a little bit here. I work, I'm going to get rid of some stuff we don't need for class. Let me just get rid of these. Goodbye. And I'm going to take this address and I'm going to slide it down just a little bit, kind of differentiate things here. Okay, we don't need these buttons right now either. Goodbye. And in fact, I might as well just, let me, let me just clean house a little bit here. Just make this easier for class. You can see everything. Okay, so there's a primary address. All right, we'll call this address one. And for address two, guess what? We're just going to copy this stuff, copy, paste, put it down below here. Okay, and this will be address two, their seasonal address. Possibly. What's going to happen is you're going to have a date that's included inside of some other dates. Okay, now we got to work with a calendar year here. So we got to work from January to December. So if they have a summer home, okay, that's from like June to September, that's easy, right? June 1st, maybe September 30th. Okay. If it's the other way around, if they winter, okay, and they winter from October through March, then you're going to want to make the address one be that whatever that middle date is that isn't splitting over the year. Okay. That's how, that's how the algorithm is going to work. So whatever date is going to be the one that's between two dates is going to go in address one. Okay. Now let's add those other fields on here, those date fields. So under form design, we're going to go to add existing fields and they should be right down here on the bottom. Click, shift, click, and then we're going to drag them all up, drop them right there. Okay. I'm going to get rid of these labels here. We've got the month and the day and in the extended cut for the members i'm going to show you how to turn these into combo boxes so you can just drop this down and pick march and then the days over here will go 1 to 31 for march or if you pick february it'll go 1 to 29. all right we're gonna do a lot of checks and stuff like that in the extended cut but for now we're just gonna use some simple text box get these lined up like this quick okay all right let me left align these and i am going to put some labels around here let's go let's copy that label this is going to be month and day. Yeah, I go cheap sometimes, which is one label. <laughs> and we'll slide that over a little bit so we can fit another label over to the left. Copy, paste, put you over here. And this is going to be the start or begin, whatever you want to call it. And the end date. Okay. Looks good. Looks good. Beautiful. Okay. Shrink that up a little bit. Shrink that up a little bit. Let's see what we got. Save it. Close it. Open it up. All right. Looks good. So this will be the address that we're using. Oh, I didn't change these, did I? Let's change those real quick. But you see, this will be the address that we're using for these dates, which by default is the whole year. And if we change this to some subset of the year, then it'll, it'll default to address two if it falls outside of that range. That's where we're going with this. But let's come down here real quick and change these. I didn't change the data for these, right? This should be address two. Okay, remember they're in this drop-down box here, address two, city two, whatever. And I also want to make sure I change the name of the box as well. I don't like the names being text 30. All right, so change each one of these, right? City two, copy, paste. State to copy paste same for the zip code or whatever you call it in your country. If you're somewhere else in the world and the country here, I leave country blank. If it's a U.S. person, if it's someone else, I'll put Canada or UK or whatever in there. All right, save it, close it, open it up. All right, looks good. Okay. So let's say that this is my summer home. I'm going to put summer home here. We'll just, so we, so we can see it in the query that it's working right. And let's say I'm only here from six, from January 1st until September 30th. Now we're not doing, and I hit tab, this is at the end, so it went to the next guy. Let's go back. 
Okay. Um, now I'm not doing any checks here. Um, I'll do some some validation and checks and stuff to make sure like the start date is less than the end date and stuff like that in the extended cut. All right. So for now, the rest of you, you're gonna have to make sure that your people type in stuff that's valid. Okay. Yes, you can use VBA and verify all this information and all that stuff. That'll be covered in the extended cut. All right. For the rest of the year, let's say I'm at my winter home, which is I don't know one two three um, somewhere. <laughs> Florida, da, 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 da. and uh, okay, let's put this up in Buffalo, New York, there, so we can see the difference. One, four. Okay, so now I want to make a query that says, take a look at this date, all right, 6-1 of the current year to 9-30 of the current year. Okay, so we're going to use date serial to put that together. If... The current date, today's date, falls inside of this range, then use this address. If not, use this address. Okay? So wherever they're at in the middle of the year, in the summer months, you want to put up here. Okay, the winter address, especially if it flips, you know, like December through January, you're going to want that to be address 2. Okay? If they're only... If they only go to the winter address from, you know, after a lot of people come down here to Florida, like after New Year's, they stay up for the holidays to visit with family and stuff. And then after January, you know, after the New Year, that's when we start seeing all the influx of the snowbirds. <laughs> they all come down from like January through March or April. So if that's the case, then you would put that up here as their winter address, because if it's January 1st through April 1st, then you want that date up here and the rest of the year is down here. See what this is the this is the inclusive range, this is the exclusive. This is the everywhere else address. Okay, let's go to the queries. Create query design. Let's add in our customer table. That's the only table that we're going to need right now. I'm going to bring down the star and then we're going to need to figure out a couple of dates here. First, we're going to figure out the address begin date for this year. Okay, and I'll zoom in so you can see this. Shift F2. This is our calculated query field. Address begin date this year. What's it going to be? Well, date serial. That's why I wanted you to learn date serial first. The year of today's date, comma, and then the address month begin and the address day begin okay see how that works we're making a, a new date called address begin date this year and it's going to be a combination of the current year plus the address month begin and the address day begin hit okay well, let's see what that looks like i come over here to the right okay there it is there's my address begin date this year 6 1 2021 it's currently today's date is december 27th 2021 all right and the rest of these guys all begin on January 1st. Now we got to figure out the end date for this range. Okay, let me save this while I'm thinking about it. Save, we'll call this the customer address queue. Okay, back to design view. Very similar, in fact, I'm gonna copy this guy. Copy, we'll come over here. Let me just shrink this down a little bit. We'll come over here, paste it in, shift F2 to zoom in. All right, we got the address end date this year is going to be the address month end and the address day end. Just like that. Hit OK. Save it, run it, and let's take a peek. Slide, slide to the right. And there's your address end date this year. Okay, looking peachy. Everyone's looking good so far. The only one we changed is that first record. Okay, so now I want to know, does today's date fall inside that range? So let's make another field called is between. So I'm going to zoom into the next field here. All right, is between. This is where our if function comes in. If, if the address begin date this year is less than or equal to today's date and today's date is less than or equal to address end date this year. Okay, if that's true, Put a one in here, otherwise put a zero in here, okay? Now, whether you use the equal signs is up to you or not. If you want it to be inclusive or exclusive, that's up to you. So if the address begin date is less than today's date, less than or equal to, and today's date is less than the end date. So in other words, if today's date is between those two dates, 
Yeah, you could use the between keyword, but I, I like it doing this way. All right. Then is between is one. Otherwise, is between is zero. You could use true and false here if you like to. I, I'm an old school C programmer, so I like one and zero. Okay. Now, let's take a peek. Run. Let's see what we got. Okay. Ah, look at that. So, since today's date, it's currently December, is not between those two dates, then we're getting a zero. And I like to use the greater than, equal to, less than, equal to, because uh, it'd be possible if you, if you didn't have the less than, equal to, then 1231, this would still show you not between, because it's not including the endpoints. Okay, are you following me? Are you with me? So we've, we've done a bunch so far. Okay, we've used our date serial function, we used our is between, our if function. So now I'm going to determine what the address, city, state, zip, country are based on whether or not is between is true or false. So, ready? Address now. If is between, then use the address field. Otherwise, use the address to field. Do that, and I'm going to copy that because we can use it for all the rest of them, right? We got city now. City. City 2. Okay, and then we got state. Group. All right, state now. State. Ah. That was happen. State 2. Okay. City, state. Where we got zip. Zip, def 2. Zip. Come on. To and finally, country. Paste. Country. And I'm going to copy this now. So down the clip. Paste. Paste. To. Okay. All right. Save it. And that's why I wanted to make is between because I didn't want to have this big complicated thing inside of each one of those. That's why I made is between a separate field. All right. Run it. Let's see what we got. Slide to the right. And there we go. Okay, not between, so we're going to use the winter home. Okay, which was the second address, I believe. Let's double check and make sure I save changes, yes. Winter home, down here, not between those dates. Let's change this and make sure. Let's say this is this now. So it should be between those dates. Let's run the, run the thingy. And I should be at my summer home now. All right, yep, there it is. Let's make sure someone else works too. All right, let's put this back to 9... Whoops. See, you got to make sure. I didn't put any data validation in here, folks. You got to make sure you're people typing in correct dates. Okay, you could put your own data. Val I got tons and tons of different lessons on data validation or become a member and watch the extended cut. And I'll show you how to make these combo boxes so you can pick the stuff. Let's change one more person too. Let's change Deanna Troy. Let's say from 4-1 to 8-15, she's there. And elsewise, she's on beta Z. And that's our address. I don't know what a beta does that address would look like. <laughs> All right, whatever. <laughs> okay, I'm getting silly now. All right, ready? Open it up. And she's on. There's our beta Z address. And she should be there right now. Yep. See, not between. There you go. So as you can see, with a couple little fields added to the table, you know, a couple month day here, a little date serial, a little if. It's fairly easy to do two addresses now what if you want multiple addresses what if they got three four five different addresses that you might need to mail to well that adds another level of complexity and i will cover that in the extended cut for the members we'll do unlimited addresses all right so you could put two three ten of them in here if you want all right we'll check to make sure that the uh the days are valid for the month so if you pick june it'll show one to 30 if you pick february it'll show one to 29 if you pick january it'll show one to 31 We'll make sure we'll do a we'll do some basic correction to make sure that the start date is less than the end date, for example, so they don't put you know October through June that way. Um, we'll make an add button because sometimes seeing that bottom row down there can add can can confuse you. Maybe you'll you'll see the new over here, so I'll make a button that'll just add a new one on the bottom. Okay, but the big thing is we're going to have unlimited dates here. And we'll have to use some different techniques and some D-lookups and some other stuff to get this to work. But that's all covered in the extended cut, members only. Um, for more information on how to join, 
stay tuned. I'm going to tell you in just a second. Here you go. Ready? How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry. These free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.